everybody. I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Officer for Enterprise DNA, and very excited to be here today with Greg Phillips. Um, Greg is a longtime Enterprise DNA expert, and we are rolling out um, the first course, to my knowledge, available anywhere on the Deneb Custom Visual and how to, how to build your own visuals through that. Um, so welcome, Greg. Glad to have you here today. Glad to be here. Thank you. Um, so, Greg, I know you are you are now one of the one of kind of the world experts on Deneb, um, and I wonder kind of how you how you got there. You know what 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 kind of sparked your your interest in, in the first place, and how did you how did you progress from just somebody interested in it to where you are now? Well, probably I guess uh, it was an introduction with JSON. Um, I did some analysis of theme files from the JSON code level. Uh, so I had my interest peaked in JSON a little bit. And then I heard about this thing called Deneb back in pre-release that was in, I think, November of last year. Um, and it said, you can code in JSON to produce visuals, Power BI. I said, oh, how do I do that? So I started uh, trying to figure it out and found the online resources for Vega Lite, which is really, really good. And uh, the Deneb website, uh, that uh, Daniel Marsh Patrick produce is excellent as well. And they both made my learning easier. Lots of examples that I could see and start to follow and take apart and figure things out. And then Deneb was released and I did more. And then um, for Enterprise DNA Challenge 17, I actually restricted myself to only using Deneb uh, in my solution. And I learned a lot there. Um, so it's, it's a trial and error is how I got here, but my interest was peaked, um, from JSON as the start. And as an engineer, I like to know how things work. So it was very easy, a uh, very easy fit for me. That's great. So what would you, what would you say is kind of the major advantages of, of Deneb? Major advantage is that you can make a small change. And you can see your your the results of your or sorry the impact of your change immediately. Uh, the uh, editing environment that uh, Daniel Marsh Patrick has provided us allows you to see your code on one side of the screen and the results of your code in preview form on the other side of your screen. So I can literally um, change uh, the smoothing of a line chart, for example, change a value and see it immediately. And if I don't like it, I can roll it back. Um, I, I find that hugely valuable. Kind of what's the range of the range of visual types you're using it for these days? Oh, my goodness. That's one of the most wonderful things and also the most difficult things about an Ebb and Vega Light is that you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, you have a uh, toolbox, if you will, of basic shapes. Uh, you have a bar, uh, you have a line, and you have a circle, uh, and you can combine them in any way, in any number of layers uh, to produce pretty much whatever you want. So producing, for example, if I want to do a lollipop chart, that's a, a thin bar and a circle. I know I'm going to need two marks to make mm -hmm. that work. Um, if I want to do a bar chart with internal labels and internal categories, I know that's going to be three layers, one for the bar, one for the label, one for the axis, and one for the data value, excuse me. So I just, uh, it's really, um, really clearly defined the question I'm looking to answer before I start, mm -hmm. because it's very easy to get sucked down a rabbit hole and go and make exceedingly complicated visuals. And when you've done it, looks wonderful, but it doesn't help answer the question that you wanted. So I try and spend more time figuring out the question and then pairing the visual back rather than uh, adding to it. So do you do some basic kind of wireframing or sketching before you start in on the JSON file? Not really, no. Um, I, I've built up a uh, library myself of... Uh, about a dozen templates that I posted on Enterprise DNA. Um, and I have access to uh, way more than that from others. Um, 
I've looked at all of them and I do find that when I have a question, I think, oh, that's kind of close to this one. So I go and grab the template for that one and make some small adjustments. And I'm usually 50% or 80, 85% of the way there right away, very quickly. So, And that's the library you've put on the Enterprise DNA Forum? Correct, yes. So we'll put, we'll put the link in, in the... Yeah, in the, uh, that's, the that's more of a basic video. library. They're more, those are more basic templates, I guess, with the, the point of them being... Um, these aren't suggested visuals for people, but they're more demonstrations of how you might go about something. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that any of them will be uh, drag and drop uh, to use in production reports, but they will serve as, uh, or sorry, they hopefully will serve as starting points for people to, to put something together quickly uh, that meets their needs. So how long does it take you, like on a, let, let's say a moderately complex visual, now that you're, you're kind of at the level you're at, um, how long does it take you kind of start to finish to put a, uh, a custom graphic together? Uh, not long at all. Like um, for, we had uh, just an example earlier today, actually, um, where I took a, a template and applied it to a vastly different data set and what had been uh, using the, I think it was the bullet chart template uh, posted on the Enterprise DNA uh, Deneb Showcase, uh, which had, I think, four overlapping bar charts, changed that to a bar chart with three overlapping circles very quickly. And that was literally half an hour, different data set, different marks, and, and pretty much worked first time. Just change names to protect the innocent and, the, and run in works. So, and I can I can uh, say that 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 was that was part of our our challenge team and it looks great. The the, the and, visuals you're creating in this look remarkable. And that's without thought. I mean, there's a whole new thing in Deneb 1.3, which is currently uh, on App Source, but it's being released. It's not out yet. But when it is there, you have full control uh, over the colors that you want to choose based on your theme. So we'll be able to go in and pick, say, I want uh, theme color four and I want to shade it at 47%. Wow. So you have that level of control. Um, how are you going to use it all? Uh, that's totally up to you. It's, I mean, the colors um, that you may have been having some issues uh, trying to figure out how to, to streamline and sync up uh, Vega Lights color schemes with Power BI color schemes. Uh, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, it's amazing. And I know, I know Daniel yeah. Marsh-Patrick is constantly updating and improving this. So he's putting he, he's a amazing. tremendous amount of attention into it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's I, I can only imagine what's coming in the future. I really don't know. But I, I find it really, really excellent right now. There's a debug panel too in version 1.3. So on, which is great, which means you can see your entire Power BI data set what the values are. And you can not only see the data set that you provide to it, but you can see the extended data set based on any transformations that you do within the TNAB visual itself. So you can see exactly what should be, exactly the data values that should be shown. That's amazing. Yep. So who would you, who would you say this course is geared to? And are there any are there any prerequisites or is this something that, you know, anybody kind of diving into this course can, can learn start to finish? Um, I think it probably is a little bit more for an inter intermediate or uh, advanced person, uh, someone who is kind of familiar with code or comfortable working with code. That is because essentially that's what you're doing. Essentially you write a JSON file and you uh, attach it to a Power BI data set and it runs. So your development work is going to be in the Power BI data set that you're going to provide to it, which would be the same work that you do for any Power BI visual. So that stuff doesn't change, but uh, what you will need to do is, is be comfortable working with uh, JSON code. And there are a whole bunch of templates. Uh, I think uh, Daniel Marsh Patrick includes uh, four or five templates uh, in the interface itself, 
or you can access any other template provided from any other source, such as the ones on the Enterprise DNA Teneb uh, showcase uh, or others that you find uh, on the internet. And um, Deneb will recognize differences in uh, field names. So if you're providing a data set with different field names, the NEB will recognize it and go, huh, I can't map that what's in the template to this data set. So I'm going to pop up the screen and ask you, how should I map it? You know, one of the, one of the things I've noticed, um, you know, just on the, the LinkedIn and Twitter communities is that there are more and more people getting engaged with this visual now and posting templates and examples. Yes. So, you know, it, it, it really is, as you say, you know, you've got a, you've got a great, a great library and a great head start for folks. But, you know, I think for those who are kind of active in the community, it seems like every day there's kind of more and more resources that become available. And, you know, that I think as time goes on, this is just going to gain a stronger and stronger foothold and make it even easier for people to, uh, to get engaged with it. I, to I totally agree. Uh, one of the things that's uh, probably the biggest takeaway for me is that um, I now look at visuals as um, a set of simple visuals that are on top of each other. Uh, so uh, when you use a Power BI um, bar chart, for example, right out of the box, when I look at that, I don't see that as one layer. Now I see that as three layers. There's a layer for the bar, there's a layer for the axis, and there's a layer for the data value. And it's very easy for me to recreate that in Deneb. Interesting. Uh, so however, you say everything is layers and marks now. I do now. So, and the nice thing that's the, the incredible thing, I, I can't say enough about the guys that develop uh, the Vegalite language, um, is that Vegalite takes care of rationalizing the differences in axes. If you want to overlay uh, two charts on top of each other that might have different uh, ranges, Vegalite figures out what would be the best axis for me to, to show everything. And it just doesn't. Just, Sorry, I as a designer that don't need to be involved in determining how it should do it. It just doesn't. Does Deneb have the ability to go into, into Vega as well? So if you find that yeah. Um, Vega light is not sufficient for, I mean, it'd be hard to imagine, you know, kind of visuals that wouldn't be accomplishable within Vega light, but I know Vega has an even larger feature set. And so that's, that's something people could move into as well. Yep. Um, to be really technical, my understanding is that there was originally a language created by the interactive data lab. I think it's the interactive data lab at the university of Washington called D3. And then somebody thought that D3 was not user-friendly enough. So they put an abstraction layer on top of it and it became Vega. And then somebody looked at Vega and they said, it's not easy enough. So let's put an abstraction layer on top of that. And they called that Vega Lite. And literally all of the work that I've done with Deneb has been with Vega Lite. I haven't needed to go there. However, there are things. Um, and if you're experienced in Vega, then it's the same process, just different language. And there actually is a setting in each Deneb visual where you choose says I'm using Vega or I'm using Vega Lite. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So by the end of the course, what would you expect um, somebody who's, who's never touched Deneb before what would you expect their level of proficiency and them to be able to do with the, the visual by the end of the course? I, I, I think it's probably a bit more of the understanding of what you can do. Um, I don't know that people are going to be able to um, start using Deneb right away and to be working right away um, in their reports. But what I do think is that um, if people do um, incorporate Deneb into their development activities and as they gain experience it'll become faster and faster and faster uh, one of the things that I've seen um, people are always requesting can I tweak this visual to do this can I tweak it to do that and my answer with Deneb is yeah you can 
you just need to, to work at it and think about what layer you want to do it in. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a bar chart where you want the data labels to be different colors, depending on different values or whatever, and think of that, it says, okay, well, I'll do my bar chart and I'll make my, my bar mark and I'll get that set. And then I put in my, my uh, data label and I'll put a, uh, a simple condition in that says, if this, then red, if that, then green. And then uh, you see that and you say, those aren't quite the right colors I like. So you go and get colors and you add them in. And you just keep tweaking it until you get to a point um, that you like. Uh, one of the things I think is going to be difficult for people is stopping. Because it's, I can see it going on for hours and hours and hours on a visual, which totally defeats the purpose of it. So again, coming back full circle to really being clear on exactly what question you're looking to answer is a really good um, place to jump off of and a place to keep in mind during your Deneb development. And so in terms of the, the tweaks and, you know, kind of questions that come up. So if students go through and have questions, they can hit you up on the, uh, the enterprise DNA forum about that. Absolutely. Great. Great. Yep. No, it's, it's great. And there is also a, um, uh, Daniel Marsh Patrick has, um, supplied a GitHub repository for Deneb itself, uh, that is the place where uh, uh, interested people can go and request features. And he moderates uh, that um, community as well. Uh, and often the community answers questions that people post there. So I would say that's also an excellent place if you've got a, a um, probably a bit of a lower level question about uh, Deneb or Vegalite. Uh, you can post it there. Um, the one thing that's really nice too is if there are questions about Vegalite syntax, there's gobs and gobs and gobs of resources online. Mm. And Vegalite is used in many places. Deneb just happens to be one. Um, you can use uh, Vegalite inside Python. You can use Vegalite inside, uh, I think it's an app called Observable. There's many different um, you can use it through C Sharp as well. So you can, uh, and you can run it in uh, Visual Studio Code. Oh, wow. As well. So, I mean, it's, um, there, there's so many resources available online. So if you have a question about Vegalite, I wouldn't go anywhere near Power BI and Deneb online. The first thing I says, how do I do this in Vegalite? Mm -hmm. And there's probably some, article you can find online that somebody has had a similar question that you might be able to tweak for this if you can't find the answer on the, the Vegalite documentation which is extensive it just takes a while to get familiar with how yeah, things I've, I've been through that um the University of Washington gallery and that's it's amazing. Nuts. It's, it's great it's yeah. really great and we'll put we'll it put really the link is. to that as well yeah and that's also a great learning resource so there's so many examples there uh just take apart pull one example that you think is cool and take a look at it, grab the code and put it into Power BI and make it work. Yeah, that is that is what's nice. They've got hundreds of examples and exactly. all with the, the complete code yep. and some, some really remarkable visuals people have created. I know. And you're, you're pretty much limited only by your imagination. Yeah. Which is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah, I know you're always looking for, for challenging problems. Um, how, last question is, how, how do you think people should most productively go through the course? Well, it's split up into three sections, if you will, or three areas. I guess the first uh, six modules, I think, are to do with the, the theory behind Deneb, uh, which may be of interest to everybody and maybe not of interest to everybody. The second uh, six or seven modules are to do with how to do the various different shapes in Deneb. So we've got one module on bar charts, one module on circular charts, one module on heat maps, et cetera, um, which again are probably interesting for people to see how things um, develop uh, from basic to complex. And then there, there's a few examples at the end of the course 
where you start to finish development of composite and complicated uh, visuals. And one of the big takeaways from that is that a, co a complicated, complex visual is nothing more than a series of simple visuals that are layered on top of each other or concatenated beside each other. And yeah, I've seen I've seen Daniel do that kind of heat map bar chart combo, which is yep. really impressive. But you're right, it, it's 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 a number of simple visuals kind of concatenated together. Yeah, there is actually a great busy, uh, video. On, I'm going to get it. I'm going to say the name wrong. Uh, Jose Escalante um, from uh, Venezuela has a great video uh, where he develops a six uh, layered bar chart or sorry, a six layer column chart. Uh, and he develops it in six separate components. Uh, so you see what each one are, and then he combines them all into one. I'm seeing, is the that end. the one where he mimics the IBCS um, yeah. chart? Yeah, yeah, excellent video. He, yeah. He's it's, a great resource. Great. And when, when you see all six of them beside each other, you go, huh, they're all really easy. They're really simple. It's just one is offset by five pixels this way, one's offset by five pixels that way. One's red, one's green, whatever. But you look at each one of them, they're all simple. So, I mean, I, I tend to, to look at things now that way. Uh, uh, whatever visual is just a collection of simple visuals. It's just how do I want to combine them? I mean, it's interesting in, in some sense that that's a lot of Power BI in terms of whether it's M code or DAX is, you know, kind of breaking things down into, you know, for DAX, it's variables. You know, you have very complex measure, but if you break it down in pieces, it gets to be a lot simpler. And I think this is kind of an interesting analogy to that, that same process. Yeah. The one thing I like about, well, not one thing I like, there's so many things I like about this, but probably the overact, the overarching thing is that uh, by accessing uh, the, the, or sorry, by enabling Vegalite use within Power BI, Vegalite um, your code tells Vegalite what uh, it should be doing. Doesn't tell you, doesn't tell it how to do it. Vegalite's kind of saying, uh, I, I'm not going to listen to you if you tell me how to do something. I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You just tell me what I should do. And that's to me very nice because I, I, it is, yes, it is low level JSON coding, but it's not C sharp coding. Right. I mean, one of the you know, things I really like is, you know, I get I get frustrated sometimes with like R and Python visuals in Power BI, A, because they're slow, and B, because they require additional runtime and they won't publish out in um, published a web. And, you know, so you run into all kinds of restrictions. And I believe all those restrictions are absent in, in Deneb. That yeah, if you've got they, they, the, don't, they don't exist. Yeah. Daniel has incorporated the runtimes for Vega, for Vega and Vega Lite within the Deneb visual itself, so it's completely self-contained. Uh, Deneb is a certified custom visual, uh, and it can be used in any environment, and anything you can do in desktop will look the same in the Power BI service, and it works with published web. There are no limits. Yeah, that, that's amazing, you know, because yep. I, I know you and I have both me being an R user, you being a Python user, have run let into... Me, let me rephrase. Uh, there are no limits. I have not run into limits yet. And I've been at it for about six or seven months now, probably about half the time. And I've been playing with Power BI, has been playing with Deneb. So yeah, I haven't I run think into a limit yet. I would have thought if, if there were limits, you would have you would hit some of them at this point. But um, well, Greg, thanks so much. This is This is great. I really appreciate your time in putting this this course together, as I say, I think it's it's really the the only start to finish resource out there. There's a lot of good information on on the web about Dena, but um, in terms of learning from a point of you know intro through you know through complex visuals, I think this is as I as I'm aware the only game in town. And so, I really appreciate your your time and effort and thought that went into this. And um, I'm really looking forward myself to using this you know this visual in my own work. I, I'm a huge fan. Uh, there's probably about a dozen people that have been posting an awful lot of stuff about Taneb over the last uh, six months. It's been available pretty much this year. I can't remember when version 1.0 came out. I think it was just before Christmas. Um, 
so it's only been out for about six months, but there's um, incredible uh, opportunities for people to think beyond what's available in uh, Power BI. And if, for example, their um, environments uh, they don't want to use or pay for custom visuals, then uh, Deneb is free and uh, is self-contained. So you can use it anywhere. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's really kind of open, opened up the door visually to really anything, anything in Power BI, as you say, that you can imagine. Yeah. Well, this is again, part of the problem. You know, be really clear on what you want to do because you can go as, as, as complicated as you want to. Like uh, it's, it's nothing to create a 10 layered uh, visual, but it probably doesn't answer the question. Right. You want. Well, Greg, thanks so much. And um, we're excited for this course and excited to hear the, the input and feedback from, uh, from the students who take it. So thanks again. And we'll talk Thank to you Thank you soon. very much, Brian. Talk to you soon.